Hello creators, how are you guys? We are going to do a live stream here together about 2018 and how do we set goals, how do we evaluate them, and I'm gonna take you guys through my channel through the process that I use to um, evaluate, you know, what? how did last year go? And what should I look at in 2018 as goals, as priorities, as things I should focus on, and, and how do I organize all that? So I'm excited to do that with you guys here live today. Now what I'm going to, going to be doing, those of you who are here in the chat with me, uh, you guys know this is a live stream, those of you watching the replay. I'm also going to be recording the audio of this for a podcast episode. So uh, during this time right now, while we are doing the recording, uh, we I won't be taking questions, no super chats, anything like that. At the end, I adjust myself a little bit too, at the end... Um, I'm going to stop the podcast recording and then it'll just be you guys and, and me and we're going to hang out and we're going to um, answer all your questions and have like the live side of this, which is going to be a lot of fun. So thank you for the five bucks already, um, Kristen Vlogger. So uh, this is what we're going to do. There's someone in the chat called Tips with Trina and she's uh, my producer. So you can say hi, Trina. If you do have questions while we're going through this, make sure you ask them in the chat and Trina will be taking your questions and and feeding them to me so that we can answer them after the after the um, podcast recording por portion is over. Okay, so um, thank you, really appreciate that, Kristen Vlogger, and thank you guys for the five bucks. At the end, we'll come back to all your questions, all the super chats, and all that kind of stuff. So, you guys ready to do this? Let's hop in here. Let me hit record, and we'll get started. Well, hello creators, how are you guys? It's great to hang out with you again for a, another Video Creators Podcast episode like we do here every Tuesday on iTunes, SoundCloud, Stitcher, Google Play, Spotify, all the places where you listen to your podcast episodes. I'm glad you're here. We have a special episode with you guys. Um, we are going to dig in a lot into my channel and I want to share with you guys some of the things that I have learned over 2017 by evaluating my channel's analytics. And I wanna show you guys how you can do this also with your analytics. And so hopefully by the end of this, you know not only how to evaluate your channel, but also what to look for and then what decisions to make in 2018 going forward about where you should best spend your focus, your time, your energy in order to really achieve your goals for YouTube. So I'm gonna use my channel as an example and tell you guys all my dirt. <laughs> it's gonna be, going to be fun. Um, first of all, though, for you podcast people, I used to call you podience, but then some people didn't really like that name, so I stopped using it. But uh, I just want to apologize. It's been a few weeks since we've been here, which is kind of planned, kind of unplanned. It was planned in the sense that I knew I was going to take some time off for the holidays. It was unplanned. Uh, oh, it was also planned because I knew I was going to have a baby. And my wife did. We had a, a, a beautiful home birth. Our first one was a baby number seven. We had seven kids in eight years, which I think is some kind of record, <laughs> which uh, we are excited. All, all the more love to go around for our family, which we like. Um, and you can find those vlogs on my family's channel, at Smoothies, if you'd like, and uh, all the home birth and stuff. But it was longer than we expected, too, because... Then at this time off is because um, we found out that my my daughter was born blind in her left eye, and so a lot of emergency doctor visits last minute. We we're like, "What's going on?" And um, so she does have surgery scheduled in a few weeks, which is um, which will be good, and we're, we have um, high hopes for that. But. Uh, all that kind of was a, a surprise, and so I'm back a little bit later than I wanted to be, but we are back, and I appreciate any of you guys who are the praying type of people want to pray for us and keep us in your thoughts. Uh, that would that would we would, that would mean a lot to us. So apologize for the podcast being you know a little bit later here than normal, but real life stuff happens, right? And family always comes first. But now let's talk about YouTube stuff because YouTube stuff is important as well. So here's what I did. This is how I evaluate my channel and other clients, people I work for, especially here at the uh, going into 2018, the way that I look at 
um, you know, big picture. How do, like most creators that I know, I, I'm not one of them, but I understand where it comes from. Like they're looking at their analytics and every time, like every day, sometimes multiple times a day. They're in there like, how many views do I have? How many subscribers do I have? How many comments do I have? You know, like did I get anything? And I understand that. Um, I I think that there is some value in that. I think most of it just drives you crazy. So I tend to the, the when I approach my channel, I tend to kind of just pay attention to like the previous few videos that I've published in real-time analytics and um, in the comments and engagement and things like that. I've kind of, because sometimes I'll go back in and be like, oh, okay, that video needs a new title or that thumbnail is not quite working. And I'll update it if I, if I feel like this video should be performing better than it is. Uh, so I kind of pay attention to the, the previous f few videos. And then other than that, I kind of like do like a quarterly evaluation where I come in and like, okay, what's working here? What's not? And then, and then once a year, which is what we're going to talk about here today is I also then do like an end of the year evaluation, big picture overall, you know, what worked, what didn't, and how do I adjust my content strategy accordingly to it going forward into the next year? So the way I do that is I open up my analytics um, in my browser. I use Google Chrome, but Firefox, whatever, you know, you use. And I open up two tabs. And one tab in analytics, I'll set the date range to 2017. So all 2017. It'll be January 1st to December 31st, 2017. And then in the other tab, I'm going to open up 2016. So December 1st, 2016 to December 31st, 2016. And I have them both on the overview page, first of all. And then what I do is I just go back and forth between year to year in each and every analytic in my in my uh, in my YouTube analytics, it's just not just the overview, but the overview is where I start. I'm like, okay, let's compare. How did I do? You know, from watch time last last in 2016 to 17, because what I'm looking for are are trajectories. I'm looking for trends. I'm looking for what are the big things that change that maybe I didn't even notice because they were slowly happening throughout the year, and so they kind of went undetected. I want to see what are those those things like that that made the biggest impact and difference. And so with those two windows side by side in YouTube analytics, first I look at the overview page and I go down, I'm looking at watch time, I'm looking at audience retention, I'm looking at gra traffic sources, I'm digging into each traffic source, the suggested videos, the browse features, the notifications, the end screens, like everything. Uh, I'm looking at just at all of it. And, it. and I would say it probably takes maybe... Oh, I don't know, uh, maybe an hour or so. For me, when I do it for clients, I actually spend more time, honestly, because <laughs> like they pay me to do it. So it's part of my job. So I, I, I go more in depth with them. But with my channel, like I kind of, you know, I've been in it throughout the year. And so like it takes me about an hour or so, maybe an hour and a half to really just dig in and everything. So what I want to share with you guys here are my top 10 observations from my channel and then I want to get into my takeaways. So first, I'm just going to give you the raw data. Like, oh, this happened, then this happened. And then I want to, after we kind of set the picture for what happened on my channel, then I want to get into my takeaways. And uh, I have five of them. And I have a goal for each takeaway for 2018. So that's where we're going, okay? So my observations. Uh, first thing that I observed on my channel is that from 2016 to 2017 is that my views and my watch time are up which is good right but my average view duration is down um, like I said we'll, we'll get into some of the reasoning behind some of this and the takeaways here in a second let's give paint you for your pictures number one views and watch time went up but average view duration went down so I'm not holding people's attention as long as I used to uh, there's more people interested, which is great, but um, I people are more trigger happy to leave my content in 2017 than they were in 2016. Uh, number two, my subscriber count, is, my sub my subscriber growth, I should say, has slowed down in 2017. Uh, I got more subscribers in 2016 than I did in 2017. So kind of the wrong direction there, right? <laughs> um, Number three, I got fewer comments in 2017 than 2016. It's all kind of kind of negative so far, doesn't it? <laughs> there are some good things. We'll just talk about it in a second. But uh, so fewer comments, and this, this part I was kind of engaged, like evaluating engagement overall. So fewer comments, not by a lot, just by a little. But one thing I thought was interesting, I got twice as many shares. So people shared my content twice as much 
in 2017 as they did in 2016. So, okay, so they're not talking of me as much, but they're twice as likely, people, you guys are twice as likely now to share my content with other people. I'm like, okay, that's great, awesome. Uh, number f- number four, this is no surprise, I think, but my top performing content across both the years was how-to content, how to do this, how to do that, you know, very searchable, discoverable content, no surprise there. Number five, my views declined in the beginning of each year, but then picked up around April, and so that helps me know, one little takeaway, I guess I'm throwing in here, is like, that helps me, like, okay, I know that in the beginning of the year, my views declined, but don't freak out right now, Tim. That's normal. It's expected for the, every year for the past few years. The first few months of the year are decline, and then starting in April is when we see the increase in, in the pickup from there. Okay, good. Like, that's valuable for me to know. Back up. I've got a big picture. Like, am I losing? Am I doing something wrong, or is this just a seasonal thing? And apparently, it's a seasonal thing on my channel for right now. Number six, traffic sources remain pretty much the same, which was expected. And I'll talk a little bit more about that when we get to the, my takeaways. Uh, number seven, now this happened on my family's channel a while ago, but now video creators is catching up, which is the viewership on my, on computers, on desktop significantly declined and mobile viewership rapidly increased. So big switch. 2016, it wasn't that way. 2017, the mobile's taken off on my family's channel. That switch happened a little bit earlier. That makes sense because you have a different audience, a completely different audience. And uh, I think we're at like 97% mobile viewership or something like that. I don't remember exactly, but really high mobile viewership there. But that switch in 2017 happened here. So there's some takeaways for that as well. But uh, let me give you a picture. Number eight, my other observation is that there's a big jump in average view duration from um, app and email notifications. So one of the traffic sources you guys can look at, you dig in there, is notifications. And notifications, um, like in 2016, those people who came from notification watched, and they were a, a significant traffic source from an average view duration perspective. But in 2017, I'm getting like uh, almost a minute. I don't forget. I should have written, written it down. But it was a lot more... Uh, watch time, like a significant jump from what from what those notifications were doing in 2016 to what they're doing in 2017. So good to know, right? We'll come back to that. Uh, number nine is YouTube search is continually, both the year 2016 and 17, YouTube search is continually my least valuable traffic source from an average view duration perspective. Now, it's not the least traffic from a total views, total watch time perspective, but the people who come from search are just looking for something they get their information and then they're out. Like they are not spending much time watching my videos or, or digging into my, into my content. So I know YouTube search is a big thing that a lot of people are trying to target. Like why are my videos not showing up when I search for this or I type in that? And I'm like, well, there's a lot of things to consider and talk about there. But most of all, what I'm thinking, and this is saying, and that this was true in 2016, it totally worked. 2017 is the same thing for me. I'm actually not targeting, maybe even getting into takeaways too quickly, but I'm not targeting search. Um, now I make videos that are searchable, but I'm mostly going after those suggested videos because that suggested videos and those and the browse features, primarily the home page, that's like a huge, much more valuable traffic source. Again, from an average view duration perspective, so there's a lot of exposure to be had from search. But um, those people don't tend to watch too much. So that's why I'm, I've, and I did this last year, do it again this year, not direct search, but actually going into more as a suggested home. So when people see that title and thumbnail, maybe it doesn't have the keywords all perfectly aligned and everything's crammed in there that I wanted to and represent instead it's just meant to tease a story or it's meant to pinch of good value so that when a person sees it as a, as a suggested video they're like oh i need to watch that video and they click okay all right we can talk more about that but and then the last last one number 10 is my best traffic sources continually are number one browse features number two playlists and then end screens number three so that's been consistent 2016 and 17, except for playlists, um, made a jump. 
And the reason Playlist made a jump is last year I made a bigger effort than normal to think of Playlist not just as a way of organizing content, but as Playlist primarily as a way of getting people to watch one video and then another video and then another video and another video, right? So I, I, I'm trying to, I tried to organize Playlists that made sense. They were short, they were consumable, and that someone could, they weren't like 25 videos, they were like six to eight, maybe 10 videos, they all logically made sense of the progression, and I featured those playlists and interactive cards, I linked to them in the descriptions of videos, and whenever I'd share them, I'd share the playlist um, view mode things, and my end screens, and everything. So, I'm trying to get people in the playlist as much as possible, and that paid off, it worked, and I saw that effort in the playlist pay off. Uh, but not enough to outweigh the other traffic sources I neglected. <laughs> That's the thing. So I, I feel like, I guess I'm kind of mixing takeaways and observations right now, but um, I, I feel like the playlist thing totally worked and I did see an increase in, um, in, in, in watch time, in views, and I saw an increase in, a little, in, in, in playlist being more significant traffic source. I saw all that but I decline some of the other things that go along with that. It's really hard to keep all these things in balance and do them all at the same time, isn't it? So, yeah. Um, it's kind of like, okay, Tim, you did a good job juggling three balls, but you actually need to juggle 10 in order for this all to work properly. <laughs> You're like, oh my gosh, I just got three down. I don't even know if I could have four or five, let alone 10, which I do have a goal for that and a solution. Let's jump into my takeaways because uh, I'm already mixing them in anyway. Uh, so number one takeaway for me is none of this was surprising and that's not because like I'm a know-it-all or anything. It's not surprising to me because, and I wasn't expecting huge growth in 2017 because honestly, I wasn't really putting into it everything that I would have loved to give to the channel. Uh, I was making a lot of the same content that I, the same way I always make it. I was kind of like just in a system. My content became, I felt to me, kind of formulaic, where it was me in front of a black screen giving you one, two, three points for this and how to do that and screen capture for this. And, and it was just kind of like cranking out the same stuff. And I feel like in 2014 and 15, I kind of capped like the potential of that strategy for me. I'm not saying it's not valuable. I'm still doing it and still will continue to do it. But, uh, you know, in, in YouTube world, if you don't reinvent yourself every few years, people just get bored. And me as a creator, I was, I was getting bored too. And so other people then eventually come along, other creators who will deliver a similar value as you, but better, do it better, and then you eventually decline, which is kind of what I feel like I might be right on the cusp of that. Uh, now and this is, I kind of knew that, but the data now is kind of like okay, confirming for me that I tend to reinvent myself, get out of this formulaic approach, do some things that you feel are creative, that are innovative, that are that are new, exciting things people aren't doing, haven't been done, hasn't been done before, that are still deliver, delivering the same value to the same audience, but presented in a different way. And so, what's really captured my attention lately. Um, are creators who are educating people through story. So they're using like narratives to make a, a point that is much stronger than point one, point two, point three uh, type of thing, but it provides a story that provides meaning to those points and provides a bigger context and so that the impact then is way deeper, much stronger than it otherwise would. I've been watching a lot of this guy lately. I'm, I'm trying to watch every single episode now. Um, I don't know if you guys have heard of the show called The Prophet on CNBC. And I didn't have access to it before, but now I subscribe to YouTube TV and I'm able to record all of them, which is awesome. I'm just record, I'm just watching all of them. And I love what he does in that show where it's very educational from a business perspective, but it's like a reality show and he's going into a business and helps them turn their business around. And you get to know the business owners and the struggles of the business and the goals and the hopes and the dreams of those business owners and what they're trying to accomplish with their business. And, and then this guy, Marcus Limonis, who's like the host, the, the guy who's investing his money into these businesses, um, you under, you, you see through the story like, oh, like, yes, it is really important that I know my business's numbers. Oh, it's really important that I don't spread myself too thin or, or whatever. Like you, I could just, like he could have just come on the camera and for three minutes made those three points about those things. But instead, like I prefer watching a 40, 
two minute episode that is going into like a story where I come out and I'm like, oh, I really need to know my numbers. I re- oh, it's, I should not, I should not spread myself too thin. Like, and those lessons have been really helpful and valuable for me in my business. But us all communicate through story, not point one, point two, two point three, and so. Um, my goal, number one, goal number one here, and I guess they're not in particular order, but goal number one for 2018 is I want to explore a more narrative type of educational content. Uh, and I've already started doing that a little bit. I don't know if you guys have noticed, I started doing some car vlogs, some more vlog style videos. Um, we've done some animated videos and I want to dive into all those different types of experiments more, more, more deeply. I've been reading a lot over the past few months about storytelling, a lot of good books, um, watching a lot of people, going through some courses. I even went through some, to some storytelling trainings to learn how do we tell good stories, not just for the sake of YouTube, but also personally. I love telling stories to my kids, um, to my family, when you're hanging out with other people. like Who doesn't like hanging out with someone who knows how to tell good stories, right? So I think storytelling will have a much bigger impact than just my YouTube channel. Uh, I do have a content series I've already mapped out that I want to do that'll be completely narrative for, but educational and inspirational for you guys as creators. But it doesn't require a big budget for me to pull that off, so I don't know where that lands and everything. All these questions, I haven't figured things out. I'm just telling you what my goals are. So, but the one of the big ones is how do I tell stories that are educational and help you guys grow your channels? Um, all right. Number two goal is I, I mentioned how big the notifications were and how big of a jump that there was in average view duration from people who are getting notified through the push notifications to their mobile device and the emails that YouTube sends out when I upload a new video. So for me, I think like a natural goal and takeaway for that is to be more intentional about about getting people to get notified of my new videos, whether that be encouraging them to hit the bell notification bell icon, which I haven't really done that much. I just kind of still say subscribe. Maybe I should take that extra step. I don't know. I just feel like if I do that, then the bell notification just becomes the old subscribe thing eventually, right? And <laughs> Uh, and then like before long, people are getting too many notifications about everything and they just once tap on their phone, eliminate all, um, notifications from YouTube. So I don't know. That's, that's a thing. I, I don't know. But for me, like I could use my email list more intentionally, send people new videos, maybe have a segment of my email list when people sign up, like, Hey, do you want to get emailed of each new video? Yes or no. You know, that type of thing. And start creating my own notifications. I, I was using text messaging for a little while where people could text VC live to four, three, five, zero six. And you can still do that if you want to. I haven't used it recently, but, um, but then I would send a text message, which kind of, gets past then all like push notifications because you can disable a push notification, but you probably will never disable text messaging on your phone. So I was growing my own text messaging list, having people do that. Um, but I haven't done that as much lately. So maybe that's something I need to reconsider is creating my own notification systems. Number three, a goal for me is to continue investing in the playlist because it is working. It is getting, uh, increasing the viewing session is becoming a, a bigger, um, traffic source than it used to be. And I want to continue to do that in 2018. Uh, goal number four is I want to focus on creating content that holds viewers attention better to increase watch time, view durations, get them to the end screens, which for people who do get to the end screens, those are proving to be one of the most valuable traffic sources on my channel. So, um, if I can, for people who do get to the end screen and click, they end up spending a good deal of time watching more videos from me. Like their average view duration is pretty high. And so that tells me like, Hey, I only, not only going to get someone into the video, but I got to get these people to the end of the video so that they click the end screen and go and watch another video and get in the playlist modes and watch more and more videos. So my goal is 50% audience retention at the end of every video. By the end of 2018, I want to be hitting that number consistently. Uh, I've, I've seen other channels who do hit that pretty consistently. And one thing that they all have in common is their channel just like whew, take off. Like when they hit or somewhere, and there's not a magic, it's not a magical number. It just means that they're doing a really good job at serving their community, at creating content that's keeping their, their attention. And so I I find that that's often, uh, well, I'll have me careful I say this because 
um, I don't want to, this is a bigger topic, uh, but in edu- edu- educational content tends to perform differently than entertainment content does on YouTube. So that's why I feel like maybe mixing those two together for me is a smart move because the, the, um, the entertaining content is, is typically more likely to get people to the end of those those videos. So 50% audience retention at the end of the video. When the video ends, do I still have 50% of my audience left? That's my goal. And that's not necessarily just to get better stats. It's because that indicates to me that I'm creating content that's more valuable for creators and that it's serving them and serving you guys better. So that's my goal. Uh, Takeaway number five, my final goal is I can't juggle 10 balls all at once myself. I used to be able to back when I started this and I, and I have more time. Um, and even before I started this professionally, I was doing this as a, as a hobby as for fun. Uh, I could, I was doing some of this, but, uh, my family, as, you, as I told you guys uh, here in the beginning, uh, requiring a lot more time and attention now. I got a lot of little kids <laughs> and they're all awesome. And I love them, but there's just, you know, family takes, time, personal life takes time, uh, marriage stuff takes time, uh, being active in our community and with friends and relationships take time. When I was a single unmarried dude, I could do the Gary Vanderchuk thing and just go all out and go crazy bonkers. Um, it's not healthy for me now. <laughs> so I can't do this on my own anymore. And I used to be able to do all the YouTube stuff on my own, but now with, with clients that I'm working with and everything going on, like business wise, uh, one of my goals for 2018 is, is to realize that I can't do this by myself and with my family and video creators, um, they, to give the content and all this, all these things, the, the attention it needs, I'm going to need a higher producer for help. And so I actually already did that goal. Woohoo! Well, at least we're, we're trying it. We're at a trial right now. Um, and in fact, if you guys are listening to the podcast, it might be a shocker to you. I'm actually live streaming this podcast recording. So those of you guys who are watching the live stream, it's Trina, who's in the, the chat, tip, Tips with Trina. She's doing a three-month trial as my producer right now. And uh, so she's here in the live chat taking your questions. And, and when this uh, podcast recording section is over, we're going to d- jump into the, some of those questions which she's been recording. But I'm really looking forward to having a producer who's going to help me not only with content strategy and staying on top of everything in the analytics that I used to do but don't have time to do anymore, uh, but it's still like super important. Uh, I think it's important that, that I have a producer. And not just for the YouTube videos and all the content strategy and, and working with my editors and, my, and the rest of the team to kind of make sure everything is produced, created, done, done well on time, that it's all performing, looking at the analytics, seeing, okay, what do we need to change going forward? Uh, but also for the podcast episodes, you know, this is content, every piece of content eventually that we produce, podcasts, emails, videos, Instagram, Facebook, I got a whole thing, which we didn't talk about here for Instagram and, 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 um, Facebook and all that stuff, guys. So much going on. So I'm really thankful to have to, to start that start this um, process of having a a uh, producer. So you guys in the chat that I can already see you're doing, say thank you to, to Trina for how she's going to be serving you guys uh, here as we go through a three month trial together. So that goal is already accomplished. Woohoo! <laughs> So uh, I am really excited about 2018, and I think there's going to be a lot of amazing things going on here. I really am excited to digging into more narrative-based educational content. If you guys haven't watched The Profit, not sponsored, just think you totally should, and it'll be inspirational for you, especially if you're an educational channel like I do. Um, just see how good he is, at, or not, he, he and his team are at telling stories that also are educational, and that that's given me a lot of inspiration, so... Uh, but I'm looking forward to hearing from you guys what your goals are. Those of you who are patrons, uh, video creators, thank you, first of all, for your ongoing support, for making it possible for me to, to bring on people like Trina to be able to support the community better. Um, those who are patrons, I'm looking forward to seeing your posts uh, and your comments on this Patreon post and, and hearing all your feedback and, ins- and insights you maybe you have for me and feedback you have for me. Because I love feedback from my patrons because those are people who I, like, I know. They say, like, uh, and not that every 
everyone else doesn't. And everyone's at a different place financially and things like that. But the patrons, I know, like, not only when they tell me hard things, I know it's coming from a place where they really want to see me win and succeed and, and really want me to be able to serve them the best because they're putting their money where their mouth is, literally, you know. So I love that. And so you patrons, looking forward to reading your feedback, especially. And um, the rest of you here live, we're going to jump into the chat and your questions here in just a second. So thank you, everyone, for being a part of this journey with me on the podcast and on YouTube. Looking forward to 2018. Subscribe to this podcast. I got new episodes episodes for you every Tuesday where we just talk about how to grow your YouTube channel, grow your audience, and really serve the community, the people that you're, you know, that you're trying to serve, to give them the best value possible, not just for the sake of making money, not just for the sake of getting more views, not just for the sake of subscribers or popularity or whatever it is, but ultimately using all those things as tools to reach people and impact their lives. And I think you guys who have been around here long enough know that's a big part. And that's also another goal I didn't put down um, that we can talk about here, but uh, I want to surface more of those stories and make those stories educational about lives that are being impacted. So I could keep talking. We're going to have a great time 2018. Thank you guys for being along this journey with me and subscribe to the, the sound to the um, podcast if you haven't already. I'll see you guys next Tuesday. All right, live stream people don't go anywhere. I stopped the recording for that. Um, all right. How was that? You guys good? Is that all right? Uh, let's jump into some of your uh, questions here. Um, and so Trina's got them here. And here, let me get a... Uh, let me switch gears here. Okay. Um, so questions, if cards and end screens are getting zero clicks, according to analytics, what do you recommend doing? Well, if, if they're getting zero clicks, then maybe you're not getting people to the end of your video. Uh, you know, so look at audience retention, um, uh, make sure you're getting people watching those, those, um, long enough so that they, uh, so that people can watch your whole video and when they get to the end, they're, they're actually there to see the end card. Um, so if your cards aren't getting any clicks, then I would also evaluate the titles of what you're naming those cards. So if it's just a video, then maybe the title of that video isn't that enticing or doesn't fit with that part of the video. Or, you're, or if you're sharing playlists as interactive cards, which is what I do now, then maybe that's, you know, um, the, the title just doesn't fit that part of the video or the title needs to be worked on. So those, that's what I recommend doing. Uh, another question. My average watch time is three to four minutes. Would it be beneficial to make the length of my videos that long? Uh, so the, the way I think about this is not like, okay, I'm getting people to watch for three or four minutes, so I only make my videos three or four minutes long so I get 100% retention. The way I think about it is... Um, like you can, I don't want to play those games. Those games are hard to play and they don't really even work because they make it because, because what's really happening here isn't the length of the video isn't the culprit. It's how valuable the, the content is or how, how engaging the story is. It keeps people watching. So you guys remember the most val the, well, it used to be the most viral video of all time. Coney 2012. You guys remember that? Like at the time, that was the most viral video of all time. It's, it became, it first won the past, like first video to pass a billion views or something like that. I don't even know. It was really crazy big. Um, that video was a half hour long, right? And so at that time, it broke all the molds because people, the, the advice people were giving was don't make your videos more than two to three minutes long. But there's a half hour and it went crazy viral. So, but it's because it told a story that, that elicited a lot of remo emotions, a lot of reactions, and really got people engaged. So, um, I, the way I'm approaching it is not like, Hey, I got to make my video shorter. The way I'm approaching it is I need to make better content and, and deliver it in a way that holds people's attention and keeps them not just so like, eh, I think I can safely abandon this video right now, but I cannot abandon this video right now. I need to keep watching. That's what I'm trying to do. So that's how I would think about it. Think of it, look at your storytelling, your format, the, the, you know, how long does it take you to ramp up and get into the content? Uh, how good are your hooks? So your title and thumbnail set up like a good expectation for the viewer, all those types of things. Um, now I'm not saying you shouldn't 
shorten your videos because maybe you're trying to deliver X value and taking way too long to do it, right? So I'm not saying, I was just saying there's many other factors to consider. All right, what's more important, watch time or percentage watched? It depends on what you're trying to fix and what you're going after. I would say that um, I, I look at both watch time and percentage watch watch time the more watch time you get that's what kind of positions your video like what google uses to rank your videos and and deem how vid- valuable your videos are um but percentage watch indicates to me how good of a job i am at delivering the full value i wanted to deliver so i think you need to look at both um but if you have to prioritize one over the other like watch time is the one to prioritize in my opinion <laughs> Is there a way to see your demographics, male, female, age group, household income, et cetera? You can see in your YouTube analytics, just go down to the left sidebar there and it says demographics and you can see male versus female and age groups, but you can't see household income and personal information. You can see some geography stuff too about where they live, but as far as like education received and you know personal information like that, you can't see that. Uh, how would you balance hub hero help content for people who do comedy vlog videos um so i know what you mean by hub hero help i think of it a little bit differently a little less hub hero help uh think about this this is how i would think about it um think about it like and there's slightly different words for some kind of the same concept but for me it makes more sense this way um, remember I used to be hygiene? Like what's hygiene content? Like who came up with that word? <laughs> like, let me brush my teeth right now <laughs> type of content. That sounds fun. Um, so I think of it as discoverable content, which these are the videos that are intended to go out and get a new audience. And then community content, which are the videos that are developed, intended to grow the know, like, and trust factor with my audience. Like the, so the community, the people I already have. And then there's um, other content. If you, do, I have a video on my channel, um, which uh, goes into all of this strategy more in detail. It's the most recent video I think I have up there. Um, so if you go look, it's called A Guide to the Best YouTube Growth Strategy. It's an animated video we did. Go check that out. And that'll go into more detail about this. But um, so discoverable for you is not for, for narrative type of content isn't like how to searchable. That would be educational content at that point for edu- for entertainment content, like vlogs and comedy, your discoverable content is more stories that, you know, if your target audience saw this as a suggested video on YouTube, they would want to click and watch. And then you create, you create that content with the intention of knowing, Hey, the, the people that are going to watch this have no idea who I am yet. They have no reason to want to subscribe or watch any further. They're just watching because of the value or the story that was teased in the title and the thumbnail. So create con- that's your discoverable content is suggested content. Uh, and then as YouTube discovers, hey, if we suggest this content to these types of people, then the people click on this video, right? So you just got to do that more often. And then the community would be like the vlogs. You're like, hey, this does not intend to go big. I just want to tell my story to the people who are already here and build that know, like, and trust factor with them. Next question. Can you give us some tips about choosing trending topics? Um, that is kind of getting a little bit off topic, but I would say, you know, go to Google trends, google.com slash trends, uh, you know, and just ch- change the drop down menu there from Google search to YouTube search. You can see what trends are there overall, like, and, and this makes sense for some people, but Chasing trends overall is just really hard and it's really time consuming and, it's, and you got to be really fast. So I prefer to go more of the evergreen route and not just like trending, but like what are the types of things my audience is going to care about long term? You know, so in our world right now, talking about trending right now, we'll be talking about um, uh, uh, which um, Paul Logan what was a Logan Paul. There you go. <laughs> And, uh, the controversial video that he published, um, I, I should have, if I wanted to get all the views and exposure off of that topic, I should have published a video like days ago. At this point I could publish it. So I get some traction, but if I wait another week, no one's going to watch it. It's kind of going to be over, you know, people aren't going to care. So that's like trending. But like, I, I don't have the capacity to respond that quickly to something I used to. I love doing it when I could, but I'm like, I, I'm holding a, a newborn, <laughs> you know, like I guess I could do this on my phone, but then she's going to cry and I only have two arms anyway. And both of them are holding this baby. So yeah. Um, let's see. Thank you so much for the super chat. Guiding echoes, Nicole. Thank you so much. 
Five dollars said, "Hi Tim, thanks for all you do for us." I know I'm a little late on that one, but thank you so much, Nicole. I really do appreciate that and your support. Uh, that's awesome. Uh, let's see here. Level up. Hey man, um, Tim, will uploading both Facebook and YouTube the same day take away views from YouTube? Maybe, but I mean, I do it. Uh, because at the end of the day, I'm more interested in reaching people and the message that can hopefully help them than I am in more concerned about trying to get all the views accumulated onto one video on YouTube. So, um, yeah, but I, I mean, most of the time people on Facebook and YouTube aren't you know, like, you're not, most of the time you're not losing a whole lot. Uh, I upload to Facebook too, cause it's much more natural for those videos to get shared there and, um, and the autoplay. And so I'm just kind of growing my Facebook page instead of my YouTube channel there, which is fine with me. Uh, fathering autism. How about revisiting content that was popular on my channel? Lightning strike twice type of thing. Yeah, you can repeat content. I do that all the time on my channels. Not everyone who is a subscriber to your channels watch every single video you've done. Um, if any of you here on the chat have watched every single video of mine, have any of you? If you have, then I need to send you a cookie or something. <laughs> but I highly doubt that's possible. So I end up repeating myself a lot. And there's always new subscribers coming onto the channel who didn't watch all the previous stuff. So, yeah, it's fine. Um, the thing I just don't want to do is do it in a way that if someone did watch a, the previous video where I talked about that same topic, that they would be like, I feel like I'm watching the same video again. Like, I don't ever want that to happen. But sometimes I have the same points. I just deliver them differently and stuff, you know, and... Yeah, I do that too. <laughs> Mademoiselle Blummels, uh, Blummels, sorry. Direct posting or scheduling the video better for the algorithm? Either way, it doesn't make a difference. Do what's best for you. Um, but there, uh, there used to be a thing, a bug that said direct posting was better, but that was fixed a long time ago, like a year ago, maybe or more. So, uh, yeah, direct post now. Seth, how important is an upskill schedule, Seth A? Um, very important because you need to have consistency so that your viewers know to come, when to come back and watch your videos. So we can get into a lot of stuff here, but I'll just summarize it because um, uh, I got to get going here. But I just want to say that, yes, it is important. Have a schedule and it's more important to communicate. Well, not more important. Equally as important to communicate it because the whole goal of having a schedule is having some people know when to come check out your recent videos and your new videos. And so like you're not going to get everyone obviously to do that, but your diehards will know like, oh, it's Thursday. It's time for the latest um, YouTube, uh, video creators video. So I'm going to go watch and check it out, see what it is. So uh, yes, it's very important. Hey guys, I'm going to take off here. You guys have been awesome. It's been fun hanging out with you. If you want to be notified of the next time I go live, hit that bell. I'm, I'm, look, I'm taking some of my takeaways. I'm putting them to practice right now, right? Hit that bell icon, set up those notifications. Um, I'm planning and, and take my advice from the last question too. I'm having planning having videos for you guys every Tuesday and Thursday and live streams on Mondays. Um, eventually that's one of the things Trina is going to help me with is getting consistent with the live streams because those take a lot of time and research. So every Monday, um, I did it for a little bit last year, but I'm gonna make it a regular thing in 2018, which is, um, going live every Monday afternoon and, uh, me and maybe Trina, a few other people too, just, um, giving you guys all the latest news and changes and things happening on YouTube, Facebook video, Instagram video, um, Amazon video, just like whatever is happening in the online video world as it relates to growing an audience and reaching people. That's what we're going to be talking about. So uh, that'll be coming up. So enable those notifications for those. And thank you guys for hanging out. And uh, we will see you guys again uh, next week for some more videos and live streams and all that kind of fun stuff. So see you guys then. Bye.